guys. Uh, am I audible? Uh, can you hear me? Can someone just type and then let me know. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, cool. Thanks. So, hello, everyone. Um, let's just start off, you know, today's session, which is uh, Career Roadmap to Data Science. I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Anirudh. I'm working as a business analyst at Ola. So I've completed a couple of internships. Uh, I've worked in Applicate AI as well as uh, Triple IT Nagpur. In Applicate AI, I worked as a, um, um, I mean, um, industrial. It was an industrial internship. I worked there as a data science intern for six months. Uh, in Triple IT Nagpur, I worked as a research intern, and uh, both of them had completely different exposures. Uh, I've post graduated from data science and I've graduated from mathematics, stats, and uh, computer science background. So, without wasting any time, let's see what is the agenda for today. So, we're going to discuss about in next one hour, we're going to discuss about why do you want to choose data science and uh, why do you have to choose data science? I'll just ask you, you know, why data science? Prerequisites for data science, then we'll talk about applications of mathematics and statistics in data science. Then I will try to introduce you to data science, basically a basic introduction. Then how can you excel in data science? Then data science life cycle. I'll try to demonstrate how exactly a data science, uh, you know, data science project, life, life cycle of a data science project, basically. Uh, then we'll talk about what are the different career opportunities in the market. And uh, finally, we'll end by Q&A. Right. Let's start. So why do you want to choose data science? All right. I mean, I'll just ask you this question straightforward. So, I mean, why, why data science? You know, is it because it has unbeaten salaries? You know, the, the pay scale is very huge. Is it easy to grab job? Of course not. It's not very easy to grab job in any field. And, you know, data science falls into that category as well. It's not very easy to grab job. It's little effort is needed, but yeah. Growing demand, it's a very huge growing demand of data science in almost every category, every field. And it's an evolving field, right? Data science is an evolving field and it adds value to the business. So let's quickly have an activity. I'll just post you a link in the chat and I want you all to, uh, you know, give me the responses and uh, let's see how it goes. Please do this activity, guys. I will have a quick one minute and I want you to fill this and uh, we'll see what exactly, you know, why, why do you exactly want to do data science? I just want to understand this. So let's have this activity and we'll see, you know, we'll see what is the response from the people, how, how exactly it goes. Take a minute and uh, let's do this. You guys have posted a, uh, you know, Google form. So I just want, I mean, for the ones who are not active so far, so I've just posted a Google form in the uh, chat and uh, I, all you have to do is you have to go there, select an option based on the, you know, based on what you choose is right and, uh, and just submit it. That's it. Can you confirm me? Have you filled the form just to, just to see, uh, no, I hope all of you have done it. All right, so let's see with the results now. I'll just try to share my screen for a moment. So uh, the one, if you cannot see my screen, I'll just read out for you the distribution. So we've got some eight responses. We are still getting some responses. That's great. So 12.5% of the people say it's an unbeatable salary. They are choosing data science because it's unbeaten salary. You're getting high paying salaries. Other 2.5% people say, uh, you know, just because my fun <laughs> friend or cousin has suggested me to choose data science, that's the reason I'm choosing it. It's good. And 25% of the people say it's because evolving field. That's the reason I'm going to choose data science. And 50% uh, of the people say it's growing demand, extreme demand in the market. That's good. Um, I've got it. Thanks. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that activity. Uh, I don't know whether you have 
could stream my screen. Yeah. So, so you you have understood why do you want to choose data science, but I would also, you know, this is a question you should not answer me. I mean, you should ask yourself. Does data science suit you? Maybe any to any career that you choose, uh, does it suit you? Are you going to survive it? Can you survive all the difficult circumstances? Can you survive all the challenges in life that in the process of going through any field, say data science, say software engineering, say anything, you're going to ask a question, can you survive all the odds? And what if you fail? Do you have a backup? Say you have in the process of going through a data science course, say all of a sudden you felt it's very hard. I cannot do it. The mathematics is too tough or the statistics is too high to me. I cannot understand. So can do you have a backup? You should have a backup. Otherwise, you know, it's too difficult to handle such a situation. And lastly, do you have all the prerequisites? Let's see then. So. So why data science, you know, I mean, you know, this is this has been an old image that I've got from the Internet and I'll, I'll try to, this basically summarizes everything pretty much of AI or data science. So, you know, it said that it has very huge demand and AI, AI you know, deployments bring 50% of the revenue growth. They bring a lot of money to the uh, companies. Yes, salary, salary is 20% higher than the ones who have clicked on salary. Yes, 20% higher than the software engineer. Um, and then fun, yes, if you can, you know, really teach some cool stuff in AI, yes, things that matter, you know, obviously, I mean, data scientists are the ones who have, who are the modern heroes, right? Uh, so they create some amazing stuff, innovative stuff. I'm not saying others don't do it. Everyone does, but, you know, I'm talking about data science. So, uh, yeah, that's why. And yeah, they make work really easier and Actually, if you if you play a game versus human being versus AI, then obviously AI is going to win because it's trained, and you know it can make some good artists as well. So deep learning can make you an artist too, all right. And you can predict dangerous diseases. You can diagnose with diabetics. You can, you know, create some smart boards. You can create. You can detect the fraudulent transactions. You can do almost everything in AI. Uh, you know, anything which is a, you know a problem statement that you can. I think you know most of them you can solve through AI or, you know, data science. So this is something I was talking about, you know, can you face the, can you survive odds? You know, you think data science is easy. I mean, maybe, you know, it depends on individual to individual, but in reality, I must say that in one or the other phase, you will have to pass through the hardships. You will have to face the difficult difficulties. You will have to face the challenges, and then only you will see the then only you will see the test, uh, taste the success of you know any field. Obviously, you know in in our case, it's data science. So prerequisites, yeah, this is something really important. So data science is a combination of mathematics, statistics, and computer science. By the way, I forgot to answer my, uh, my, why did I choose data science? I chose data science because, um, you know, I've, I've, when I was doing my graduation, when I was in my second year of the graduation, I was, I, I got a chance and, uh, you know, I, ju I just got a chance of attending a workshop, a machine learning workshop in Bits, um, Hyderabad. And uh, by then, I didn't know what exactly was data science. And I just wanted to know, out of curiosity, I just wanted to see. Uh, I thought this is some new technology. And uh, in the second year of my graduation, I had no idea. I was just, uh, I was just you know, learning by then. So I just thought, why not to attend this workshop? It's just in a 10 days workshop. Although I didn't, uh, you know, uh, I, I knew that I'm not going to learn complete machine learning in 10 days. That's something which is impossible. But I just thought, if what exactly is this technology? Out of curiosity, I just thought I'm going to have some kind of basic idea. But let's see what exactly is this. So by then, I had no clue of what exactly was data science or machine learning. So we were five friends who were from mathematics, stats, and computer science background. In the initial, you know, first few days, he was just talking about the guest lecturer was talking about, um, say, say coding, or we need to install that package, that package. Uh, then we have to install some software, so all of that stuff. Then when exactly we were talking about, the guest lecturer was talking about the regression analysis, or say chi-square test, all of these. Because this all of all of these have studied, you know, in second year or maybe in the first year itself. So I kind of had an idea of what exactly he was talking about. But among the 
500 or something audience, uh, very few who had already learned stats and math kind of were understanding, but majority of them to sort of say we're not at all following the lecture because it's pure statistics, right? So, and mathematics basically. So majority of them were not understanding. So then I thought this is what is for me. I mean, this is where, this is what has striken me into my mind. And that's where I thought, you know, machine learning and data science is not very far to me. It's actually very near. And this is something which I can, you know, probably pursue easier than any of the other fields. When I was start, uh, thinking about what to do next, this is this is what struck me in my mind, and that's the reason I've chosen data science. So, even for you all, you have to ask yourself: Why do you have? Why did you? Why why are you choosing data science? I mean, what is that one thing that's striking in your mind because of which you are choosing data science? And you have to stick to it. You have to stick on it, and then you know, not lose it, not to you know leave till you you know achieve it. Uh, Till you achieve a certain stage. So, yeah, let's get back. So, prerequisites for data science. So, data science is a combination of mathematics, statistics, and computer uh, computer science. And mathematics and statistics are the you know backbone of you know basically data science. You know is a I mean mathematics and statistics is the backbone of data science to sort of say. So yeah, what exactly do we have to learn in mathematics? What exactly do you have to learn in statistics or computer science? So in mathematics, you have to be good at linear algebra. Linear algebra is is the core for um, you know major major uh, machine learning or deep learning algorithms. Then calculus, in, uh, both integral and differential calculus, you have to be very good at both of these. You have to be good at probability theory. You have to be good at probability distributions. We have discrete and continuous. I'll be, you know, detailing all of these in, in a moment. A statistical analysis, and you have to be good at statistical inference. You have to be good at programming. So as you can see, you know, algorithms of programming and mathematics, you know, this is what, um, this is what is put together a machine learning, right? So, and then data structures and algorithms, then database management. So all of this, if you are aware of, or maybe if, you think yeah you know all of this then you're good to go and study data science otherwise you will have to prepare all of this you have to be you know aware of all of this you have to ha kind of have basic understanding of each of these concepts which you are not really aware of so you're not aware of statistics then i must say that you have to you know concentrate on statistics say you have not aware of mathematics say linear algebra you're not say you're weak in mathematics, try to, you know, concentrate on, say, at least the basic stuff so that you can just pass through the algorithms and understand what exactly is happening. So understanding of all of this is really mandatory. Otherwise, you cannot really, you know, understand the algorithms which talk about, which really, you know, deal with pure mathematics. So we'll see what are the different applications of statistics and mathematics in data science. I have listed very few here, but there I must tell you that as I've said before, mathematics and statistics are really a backbone of, you know, uh, these two are, you know, backbone of data science. So I've listed very few here, but the numerous applications of data science. And I must say, you know, mathematics and statistics are the, it's built up, you know, both of these are built together to make data science. All right, so you know, loss functions, by uh, univariate and bivariate analysis, regularization, covariance matrix, support vector machine, sampling, pre processing, hypothesis testing, vision statistics. In dim uh, dimensionality reduction, we have principal component analysis, singular value decomposition, natural language processing, we have word embeddings, leading semantic analysis. In computer vision, we have image representation, convolution, and image processing. All of this, all of this. I mean, there are many actually, but you know, the ones which have listed are you know purely involved with mathematics and statistics. So, what exactly is data science? Or, uh, you know, you know, as soon as someone you know is asking you what exactly is data science, then uh, you, you kind of say you know, data science is pure math. It's, it's a combination of mathematics, statistics and computer science, but yeah, it also means that you're using some kind of algorithms, you're trying to use methods, processes, and using all of this to extract knowledge. And 
extracting knowledge from noisy unstructured and structured data and through this you will try to generate some actionable insights and which may be you know of some use to the business teams or maybe some use to the problem statement business problem and what exactly is ai then ai is something which you know it tries to mimic the human brain it tries to you know describe machines that mimic and display human and uh, cognitive skills that are associated with human mind such as learning and problem solving so as a human being you know we try to learn as well as we have a capability of the problem solving in the way in the same way ai tries to mimic your human itself and it has the capability of learning and the problem solving so what exactly comes first is it ai is it machine learning is it deep learning so yes ai is basically a superset and in which we have data science and data science you know then we have machine learning in machine learning we have deep learning so to sort of say machine learning was initially made i mean list of machine learning algorithm, algorithms that we have are, are the basic ones and deep learning algorithms are to sort of say you know they kind they try to find solutions to the hard problems or the complex problems which machine learning algorithms cannot do it so that's the reason we have or maybe in a easier way they can easily solve the deep learning problem so uh, the problems can be easily solved by deep learning so that's the reason machine learning uh, you know is a sort of superset and deep learning is of subset of machine learning so what exactly can we do i mean we know what assume that you know what what is machine learning and deep learning then what next you know assume uh, so we can solve cv we can solve computer vision problems basically and we can solve natural language processing so what exactly do we have in natural language processing say we have you are supposed to you are supposed to do something like you know sentiment analysis say you are supposed to categorize you know a tweet say you're doing a twitter analysis you're trying to see for each tweet whether it's a positive negative or a neutral tweet or maybe i have, sp I have maybe i say you, you're a good boy so is it a positive statement or is it a negative statement is it a neutral statement so all of these analysis or maybe speech recognition you're trying to you know uh, in input a speech and trying to see which who has you know really spoken it or whether it's a positive or negative or neutral or maybe it's is it a donald trump or is it uh, you know president of india who is exactly speaking uh, you know that's called speech recognition and in cv we have say you you insert a photograph of, your, of yourself or maybe you know just an example of your phone itself as soon as you know uh, you know face recognition happens or maybe if you are an employee then you know face recognition as soon as you as soon as you enter your office maybe then you will see you know your name being displayed on it it's all because of the cv computer vision it's trying to you know every day it's getting trained and every day it's recording every day the model is tra getting trained on your name and every day uh, it's saying that oh uh, maybe anirudh is looking like this or say ravi is looking the, like this or madhavi is looking like this so every day you know uh, 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 the model is getting trained and it's trying to recognize it and save it maybe feed it in its mind and then trying to predict it on everyday basis so computer vision nlp all of these are uh, again come i mean not come actually they are all of these are solved using computer vision uh, deep learning and stuff so how do you excel in data science i mean uh -huh. so what is the what is the things that you're supposed to know or what are the things you're supposed to concentrate on in each of these different aspects that i'm going to cover in next few minutes what is that you're supposed to know so you're supposed to know linear algebra completely as i've said before you're supposed to know vector calculus you're supposed to know matrix calculus supposed to know optimization what is different what are different optimization techniques what is regression what is dimensionality reduction and what is you know classification all of these in probability yeah, probability and statistics are you know again you know very key concepts in data science in discrete you know you're supposed to be aware of binomial uh, distribution bernoulli distribution geometric hypergeometric Poison, Poisson distribution, all of these, and in continuous you have uniform distribution, exponential distribution, you have gamma distribution, gamma first kind, gamma second kind, beta first kind, beta second kind, then you have normal distribution, you have multivariate normal distribution, and you need to be aware of probability, you know, there is theoretical probability, there is classical probability, you have to be aware of all of this, and you have to be aware of 1D array, sorry, 1D, one dimensional random variable, then two dimensional random variable, how do you solve it? How do you solve a particular use case? 
uh, the function of a random variable what exactly is joint probability density function what exactly is uh, you know marginal uh, sorry what is it, what exactly is joint probability distribution what is uh, uh, distribution function what exactly is marginal um, you know distribution and what exactly is I mean, all of this, you know, probability consists uh, constitutes of all of this. I mean, you, which you are supposed to be, you know, something uh, which you're supposed to be aware of to sort of say to go ahead with, um, you know, with, with the go ahead of machine learning at least because all of this, you know, we'll see at some point of the other time, you know, uh, see, you know, you're trying to see a data set. You have to understand what kind of distribution the data set possesses so that accordingly you will have to take the next steps. So in statistics, you have to be, you need to have some kind of understanding of random samples and you need to have kind of have an understanding of sampling distribution. There are two, you know, there is sampling with uh, replacement, there is something as sampling without replacement, then you be aware of parameter estimations, what are the different ways you can, you know, estimate the parameters. There, there are numerous ways like, you know, maximum likelihood estimation, this numerous ways, then hypothesis testing, then ANOVA, then we have stochastic process, then we have simple linear regression, correlation, multiple linear regression. All of this, maybe I'm not trying to, you know, read everything for you because some of them are really important, some of them are not, re not really very important, but, you know, overall, you know, all of these are, you know, something which you have to be aware of. Programming, what exactly you're supposed to know in programming, you have to be good with Python basics. Maybe if you're using Python or not, you, have, you can be good at any of one of those. Um, I mean, majority, I mean, you know, Python is now universal tool for the data science to sort of say. So everyone uses Python these days. So if you're good at Python, that's really good. So in Python, you have to be good at say, uh, basics, say list, all the data types, you know, uh, mutable, immutable data sites, uh, data types, and then NumPy, Pandas, what are the basics for importing the data set and stuff. Then, uh, then not <clears throat> Matplotlib and Seaborn, all of these are used for visualizations. Then database, you can be good at SQL. SQL is, um, you know, it's good enough, I think. Then in others, you have, I mean, in R, I mean, the same thing in R. So you can be good at R basics, vectors, lists, all the data types, then uh, DPL, YR, all of these. Then uh, in data structures, you know, data structures actually play a really important role. Say you're supposed to design an algorithm tomorrow by yourself, then you have to be good at data structures and algorithms. Web scrapping, we use web scrapping, you know, just to sort of say you have to extract the data. Uh, from some uh, source, say you want to scrap uh, Wikipedia data, or maybe you want to scrap some kind of tweets. You know, you want to see what are the different, um, what are the different Instagram posts that people usually do. So all of these, maybe I'm trying to generalize it and to sort of say what, where exactly you can use web scrapping. Basically, web scrapping you can use to extract the information, extract the data, and maybe what next is a different, you know, problem statement and you know that's the reason we use web scrapping for in machine learning you'll be uh, probably uh, you know you need to understand uh, you know how exactly a model works you need to have an understanding maybe mathematical understanding theoretical understanding to sort of say of how exactly model works what are the basic data exploration techniques that you know what are the different ml models that are there model validation how do you validate a model whether this model is performing good or whether one model is performing better than others model validation underfitting and overfitting how do you uh, how, i mean all of these you know technical terms you may not be aware of but i'm just trying to you know give you a gist of what exactly are the data science what exactly is there in data science and this is really um, you know uh, to sort of say if you if you have an understanding or to this maybe you can start off with a project so that's the reason i'm trying to you know um, give you a gist of it so you need to be good at say ensemble methods other uh, which is like random forest and decision trees, all of these. Then you have to be good exibus, all of these. Then we have hand, how do you handle missing values? How do you handle critical data? How do you handle imbalanced data? How do you handle the different problem statements come in? How do you handle skewed data? Um, uh, how do you handle 
you know irregular distributed data all of these then how do you handle um i think this is enough uh pipelines how do you build a pipeline ml pipeline how do you validate cross validation uh how do you how do you handle data leakage yeah this is super important then in deep learning you have anm you have you know artificial neural network you have convolutional neural network we have a recurrent neural network and the implementation of these can be done by you know keras python or tensor flow and you know deep learning neural network then we have optimization algorithms stochastic gradient descent or batch gradient descent we have numerous optimization algorithms then how do you handle overfitting and underfitting in uh, deep learning you know the in deep learning it's different and in uh, machine learning is different uh, the way of handling the overfitting and unfitting problems and uh, there are different uh, you know techniques to that such as drop out batch normalization then uh, mini batch normalization oh, sorry um the the different ways to handle a uh, deep learning uh, sorry uh, overfitting and underfitting in um, deep learning as well and then we have some kind of uh, different kinds of problem statements associated to it say you want to do it binary classification you want to do it uh, maybe uh, as i said you want to do uh, sentiment analysis maybe text classification or you might say object reduction object detection or image recognition all of this so what exactly is there in future engineering or how or what exactly uh, you know you cover in future engineering so you have to identify the baseline model first a baseline model is something which gives you a score uh, which is which is the first one to be implemented i will you know try to showcase you what exactly is the baseline model in the coming slides what is the future generation what is future selection how do you encode a uh, categorical variables how do you encode ordinal variables then in natural language you have to be okay with text classification or word vectors data visualization you can be good at excel or you can be good at any of the tools that are available for data visualization online deployment and deployment is basically the last step uh, after entire model building so and other points you have to be good at communication skills and that's super important you have to be good with domain knowledge which is business knowledge then further which you have to keep practicing because this is not the end this is just the start this is where and you know you have to start working even more and more so this is to give you a gist of how exactly people think uh, you know after knowing machine learning and or maybe after doing a couple of projects in the machine learning they just think that you know uh, data science um they you can use high quality uh, i mean in theory it's like you know it's let's, let's use one of the high quality data sets provided by our institution but in real world the data sets are terrible i'm telling you data data is really very terrible and what you can make is making it less terrible or making it let less of you know uh it's it's a kind of very terrible guys i mean i don't know how to describe it but It's, it's very vulnerable to sort of say, and you have to make it less vulnerable. Something something similar to that. And in in uh, in theory, you can implement as many neural networks, as many deep learning frameworks. You can do this that. Maybe for a simpler problem, even for a you know say a classification or regression problem, you can do deep learning. But in reality, uh, because of the size of the data sets, because of the constraints that are set, you cannot start with a deep learning or something like that. You will start up with something very basics and uh, basic models to, uh, you know, for the initial solutions. And based on which, you know, if you have got some time, or uh, based on the business requirements, you will try to, uh, um, you know, expand or you know, you you will, uh, you know, basically improvise it based on the needs. so what exactly is the data science life cycle assuming that you know you're doing a business so you're doing a project then how do you go through the data science uh, sorry a uh, project uh, like you'll first of all understand the business like what exactly is this for you'll have to under, you'll need to have a thorough understanding of the business uh, i mean business understanding uh, in the sense what is the sole purpose of doing this data science or what is the sole purpose of doing this project uh how do how do you how exactly are the results being used all of this you need to have a complete understanding of the business otherwise you'll you're lost here you cannot proceed ahead 
and in data mining say you don't have the the data itself then you're supposed to gather the data or you're supposed to scrape the data and get the data uh, data cleaning once you've got the data then you try to see what is the inconsistency or maybe redundancy try to eliminate all of these and make the data clean in exploration you try to have some kind of statistical inference say uh, you know it, it, um, say in the next week the covid cases may rise again this is my hypothesis now what percentage of this hypothesis is true is is what the statistical inference takes, says and in future engineering uh, the, the idea here is that you try to uh, you know sort of eliminate the redundant futures you try to make the futures more meaningful you try to pick only those futures which are super important say you're doing a you know project wherein uh, you you're trying to predict the employee salary then you you don't need um, um, you don't need say uh, employers um, employers um, say uh, employees past what has he done in the past say the max in his code in his 10th grade you know all of this you don't need right i mean that say i give you 10th class marks and i give you something which is super important which is his designation or maybe his experience so among these three variables uh, you know maybe employers marks in 10th class how do you really need it they don't you don't need it right so future engineering you can eliminate those futures which are uh, are of no use and make the future matrix best best uh, in a best possible way predictive modeling once you're done with all of this then your your you know task is to make a machine learning model now machine learning any any uh, model and upon which you're trying to you know do a performance matrix now once you're done with the machine learning model you try to see how exactly is it performing and then data visualizations once you're done with all of this the idea is that you should kind of going to show the um, you know predictions to the stakeholders trying to say that this is how we're going to predict the model these are the uh, uh, you know predictions that we have got and finally that's how you know maybe the next steps is deploying or uh, you know based on the requirement of the uh, business product so assuming that you have got a fair idea in data science then what are you supposed to do so you can pick any open source data set understand the business problem thoroughly now if if it's a a uh, regression problem then start off with a regression analysis if it is a classification problem then start off with some basic project using all the classification analysis now as a, as a step what you are supposed to do is i'm assuming that you are using only a uh, supervised maybe if you are using unsupervised then that's a different topic altogether so this is only for those who are a beginners to uh, you know data science or maybe those who are some part they are aware of what exactly you are supposed to do uh they are aware of data science in some or the other way others who are not aware that's fine what you can do is you can have an understanding of this is the flow that you can follow and then you can proceed ahead so in much in regression analysis there are different regression techniques say linear regression then we have kn and then we have support vector regressor so you can use any of these regression analysis maybe all of them trying to see trying to understand how exactly all of these work it's not like you are using one model and then you're done that's not that's not how it works you have to use as many algorithms as possible see the behavior of all of these models on different uh, sorry on the same data set then be its classification use all the classification algorithms try to identify or try to see the behavior of it and see how exactly you know they go about it now before that before you implement all those models the idea is that you have to spend a lot of time in the future engineering you have to spend a lot of time in the pre processing now pre processing see as i said the data in theory is really good but data in reality is super horrible so that's the reason you're supposed to spend as much amount of time as possible in future engineering uh, yeah once you've got fair idea about the data set up right then you can start building the basic model the idea of this basic model is you can pick any model any model you can be considered as a basic model and start seeing how exactly you know is the score so you, you say you're getting 50% accuracy or 50% is the score that you have got it's fine so the idea is that when you 
when you choose then that's the baseline score you know above which you have to that's like a threshold so above which you have to perform yeah, above which the models that you choose upon next or the process that you choose upon next should be better than 0 0.5 or maybe 50 percent better than 50 percent and then start building multiple models so you can use cross validation you can use any of the methods and pick the three best models my idea is three best models you can pick five best models and then tune the parameters for all of these models that you picked are the best ones then upon which you try to see use the best model in predicting the taste set in the sense once you have got three best models you're supposed to predict it on the test set and then see how exactly are they performing and you have to pick one among the three and and you use them ahead so you can use the best model and then evaluate it on the test set with different metrics so many many people who have known uh, who have known they will just consider one metric you know we have different metrics for any problem so use all of them and see where exactly the model is lagging and the idea is that you have to try to improve improve that metric which is which the model is trying to fail all right and start post processing now in post processing the the funda the funda is that you have to you know kind of have all the visualizations see how exactly the model is performing on the different use cases or test cases and see you know if the model is not performing at a certain worst case uh, worst test case then you have to maybe improvise in the model in the sense you have to sort of say tune the hyperparameters or maybe retrain the three models that have that you have picked the best ones see which one is performing again and then finally conclude it now once you're done with all of this then you can finalize the model the model that you think is the best and the one the model that you know you felt the it's it's giving good predictions it's giving good um, it's giving good score you can use that and deploy it for the future predictions now what are the different you know career opportunities in the market so you know <clears throat> data we have some i've picked three the numerous uh, you know um, uh, uh, career opportunities like there is something known as data science associate there is something known as yeah there is a data analyst there is a business analyst there are there's like something like you know if you go to the finance side of it there is something as credit risk um, uh, you know analyst something like that so the the opportunities in the market for data science alone is, is are numerous so and you really don't have to worry until unless uh, you have good fundamental skills and good fundamentals rather so the definition of data scientist is the one who makes data driven approaches he tries to make data driven decisions he's looking uh, into the future and taking innovative and initiative solutions whereas data analyst is someone who is using current tools and algorithms to solve data related problems rather than you know something the data scientist you know might not do and business analyst is someone who's handling the data and indicating systems while being able to communicate well at many levels but the idea the, the only difference between data analyst and business analyst is business analyst actually communicates to the stakeholders regarding his reports or based on his insights that he gathers whereas data analyst at even it, all of these are you know it depends from organization to organization say uh, you know the place i'm working in i actually try to do something in data science though i'm a business analyst there's the, i mean as a as a business analyst you may not have to do uh, much in data science but here in my organization i try to do something in data science so it depends on the organization to organization it doesn't mean that you're a data analyst you cannot use data science you can definitely use data science you can use uh, for different use cases you can um, you know improvise it seek with your manager or anyone else in your team say this is this could be a best fit in this use case or this problem statement and skills required yes statistics programming in r python and mathematics are super important for a data scientist for data analysts programming statistics and visualizations business analyst by sql sorry uh, uh, r excel sql and python so and visualization of course so visualization comes into the picture when you know uh, i mean there are numerous um, applications of visualizations so like one common thing in this is all of these roles use visualization so you can use power bi you can use tableau to see uh, you know how exactly is the data behavior of the data you have can understand through various 
um, uh, uh, visualization tools. Uh, that's the reason we use visualization tools for, for the business decisions uh, and, um, and uh, yeah, for the business decisions mainly. So yeah, let's have a quick, uh, let's have Q and A and let's see how exactly, what exactly um, you guys have. Do I need to be good at programming to succeed as a data scientist? uh programming is is important but really good is um i'll tell you what exactly so the idea is that you need to be good at mathematics and statistics assume that you, you are good at mathematics and statistics then uh, then i think you know computer science is it's okay i mean all the algorithms that are built are, are on the paper first and then they are implemented through code so if you can figure out the, how exactly these algorithms are made and how exactly is the process, then uh, programming is, you know, it's, it's like a cup of coffee to you. So that, that's how, you know, you can say programming and learn eventually if you don't know, but programming uh, is just used for implementation purpose. Yes, you have to, you need to have these skills in programming. Any more questions, guys? Oh, any more questions? Uh, let's let's go on to that screen. Any kind of questions that you guys have? You can ask anything um, uh, uh, related to data science. Maybe the questions that your mind. Uh, 